Today we're doing February favorites. I realized I haven't done a favorites video yet in 2023, so I have a lot of stuff. As a result, I've compiled everything into two categories, favorites and fails, and fails will be coming in a part two video coming soon. We have a huge variety of stuff today, skincare, perfume, sunscreen, brushes, makeup, etc. So let's just get right in. And I'm gonna start with my new favorite lip balm, which is this Revision Skincare Youthful Lip Replenisher. I got this on Amazon. I heard about this through Alyssa, who's my glow twos on Instagram. She said this was the thickest, stickiest, most long-lasting lip mask that she has. So I was sold before she even finished that sentence. I was like, purchase. And she's right. This does not budge. I'm gonna zoom you in. So you really have to squeeze. It's super thick. It's this wonderful texture. It's really smooth and silky, but it's thick and has so much grip to this. When you apply this on your lips at night, you wake up and it's still there the next morning. It's absolutely incredible. The one complaint I have about it is that the peppermint scent is pretty strong in this, but so far I haven't found that that irritates my lips at all. Sometimes cooling products can actually dry out my lips and do the opposite of what I want them to do, but I haven't experienced that with this and I just love how long lasting it is. It feels so good. It stays all day. I'm not sure what ingredients are in here, but I also noticed that it just kind of smooths over my lip lines and truly does make them look a little bit more youthful. So 10 out of 10 win for me. My next favorite is this sunscreen from Elta MD. People have been asking me to try this for ages and I just had such a hard time on the Elta MD website. I went and I looked at everything and it was like so overwhelming. I could barely figure out the differences between all the formulas. And I spent an entire day doing research just on what I thought would be the best Elta MD sunscreen for me. and this was the best one. It is the Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum 41. It's lightly tinted, it's all mineral, it's oil-free, it has antioxidants, it's zinc oxide based, and it's water resistant for 40 minutes. What I like about this is it's not glowy, it's not matte. It's just a beautiful cream that has a cream natural finish. I did wear it under my makeup today and it left my base feeling a little bit slippery. So I noticed that, you know, my foundation, my concealer, my blush just kind of slid off a little bit. So my favorite sunscreen under makeup is definitely still the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense that sets down into a soft matte finish. But this on days when, you know, I'm not gonna be on camera or on days where I'm not wearing makeup at all is so great because it's not matte, it's not glowy. It's just that perfect little Goldilocks in between texture. The tint also matches my face almost perfectly. And that's really rare for me. Most of the times either a sunscreen is like stark white or the tint is super, super dark or orange. And so I have a really hard time finding perfect tinted sunscreens. It's such a struggle because I can only use mineral sunscreens. I have really bad reactions to chemical sunscreens and trust me, I've tried the best of the best from Australia, from Korea, all over the world and my skin just cannot handle chemical sunscreens. So found another one I love. This is up there with the Paula's Choice with the Live Tinted. I'm just so excited I finally tried it and it's beautiful. A skincare product that has really helped to reduce the amount of breakouts that I have is this Naturium Benzoyl Peroxide Cleanser. It's their Benzoyl Peroxide Cream Cleanser 5% and basically what I'll do is I'll go in with my Naturium cleansing balm first, get all my sunscreen and my makeup off and all that jazz. Then I'll go in with my Refer cleanser just to kind of get everything off of it that might be left behind. And I'll use a washcloth and really massage that into my face. And then I use this as a third cleansing step. And I just leave this on all over my face and down my neck as a mask in the shower for as long as I can leave it on for. Usually it's about three minutes while I do the rest, you know, of my shower stuff. And it has just been so helpful. I use it on my chest, my shoulders, and my back. And it really has helped to eliminate some breakouts. If you don't know, my doctors think that I have something called SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. I'm waiting on the test results, but basically that can cause a lot of acne. And so it makes sense why I may have been experiencing a lot of breakouts over the past few months. Ever since switching to a paleo diet, that also has immensely helped my skin. So I think paleo plus this have made a huge difference along with increasing the amount of um, Epiduo Forte and Tret that I use on a regular basis. And I just love it. I'll show you. It really does have this like really nice cream texture. If you want to see it up close, that's what it looks like. Super creamy. It's fragrance free. It's affordable. I just, I love it. The next skincare item is the Saatchi Pro Resilient Serum. And I waited to try this. It launched. I heard incredible things about it. And I just, I didn't want to buy it. It was $78. I'm really trying not to buy new skincare. And you know, I just, I was like $78 for a calming serum. Do I really need that? The answer is yes. I really did need that. This calms my skin down 
when nothing else works. This calms my skin down when even water is irritating my skin. You know when your skin barrier is just compromised and your skin is like inflamed and everything stings that you put on your face? This is the only thing that will not sting as well as my Tatcha serum and cream treatment. Those are the two that I just absolutely can't live without. And I'll read you a little bit from the website. This has five molecular hydrators. They're humectants that intensely hydrate, bringing moisture to the skin. They have peptides that promote firm skin and diminish the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It has skin identical lipids that enhance the skin's restoring capabilities and moisturization. It has regulating glucosides that soothes easily inflamed, irritative, and reactive skin, targeting appearance of redness, and a 10.5 bioflavonoid complex that neutralizes the damaging effects of free radicals to target skin aging flare-ups and uneven skin tone. It's just so beautiful. It comes out pretty much like water, and I don't wanna waste any, okay. There we go. See, it's already all the way down my hand. It is so liquidy, so thin. For most of my serums, I'll do like two to three pumps to cover my face and my neck. With this, you only need one because it's so spreadable. It just goes such a long way, which makes me feel a little bit better about the price. It doesn't feel like something I'm gonna have to be constantly repurchasing because one pump is perfect. I love that this is a multitasker. It's absolutely gonna make my best of 2023 skincare video. You know, it has anti-aging ingredients, it has calming ingredients, hydrating ingredients. It's just, it's so multifunctional. I'm bringing this with me to Miami. I bring this with me everywhere I go. I cannot live without it. It is up there. I, you know, I'm just rambling. I'm rambling. I don't need to keep talking about it. You get the picture. If you have reactive skin, if you have sensitive skin like I have, and you have a really hard time finding products that don't sting your face or finding products that will help to calm irritation, just just give it a shot. Moving on to perfume, the perfume I can't stop wearing is the Commodities Gold Personal. This is a travel size for $25, and I'm gonna put a little bit on right now because I can't wait to smell myself. Oh, it's so good. So all this is is vanilla, sandalwood, amber, and ISOE Super. ISOE Super is a molecule that is basically supposed to like react with your own body chemistry and smell a certain way. I think most people say that it smells really woody. I have a nose that cannot smell ISOE Super. I don't know what it is, but if you Google it, it's a thing. Some people can't smell it. So I don't actually know what this smells like with that note, but to me, I smell vanilla. I smell a little bit of amber and I smell a little bit of sandalwood. It is creamy and it's like, it's vanilla that's not like a sweet baking vanilla. It's like a, a cozy, super creamy, I don't know, like milky but not sweet kind of vanilla. It's really difficult to describe. It doesn't smell artificial. And you know how sometimes with perfumes, like woody and amber notes can be a little bit astringent on the nose. Like they can kind of make you like, like wrinkle your nose a little bit. I find that in this, the amber and the sandalwood are just so subtle. Subtle, they just kind of like lift it up. They give it just like a little something something So it's not just vanilla. I don't know every time I wear this I get compliments It's it's such a beautiful fragrance. I love that they sell all their perfumes in travel sizes like this I just yeah, it's become my daily signature scent. Let's talk brushes Shall we the one that I have just been like head over heels in love with is this brush that basically does your foundation for you It's the makeup forever 109 brush and it has this really interesting diamond shape to it So what's great is it can really get around the corners of your nose under your eyes But then you can flip it on the big side and you can just blend your foundation like a dream And I'll show you a clip I filmed today applying my foundation, which I'll talk about next and it's just so good It blends foundation in a second it's never streaky. It feels so soft. It's one of the best foundation brushes that I've ever tried. I believe it's $44, so it's expensive for a brush, and I did receive this in a PR, but I would spend my money on this in a heartbeat if I lost it. Um, it's just, it's that good. I don't wanna use any other brush to do my base. Before I go on to foundation, I have two more brushes. Um, the one you've been seeing me use a lot in my videos recently has been the Sephora 47 foundation brush. I've been using this for cream cheek products. I love this for blending in cream blush because it's a little bit small for me for a foundation brush. I feel like if I were using this to blend my foundation, I would just be sitting here for like five hours. But for cheeks, I think it's awesome because a lot of times I find that blush brushes tend to be too big and you'll apply it to your cheek and all of a sudden you have blush down here and you have blush up here where I really just want it to be 
like right here. That's all I want. And this is the perfect size. It also is just amazing at blending out creams really easily. It's never streaky. It's just, it kind of like slightly shears them out and blends at the same time. It's just the best brush I've ever used for cream blushes. And my last favorite brush of the month is Refer 02, which is the smudge brush. And I'm just, I love it. I use this for my lower lash line and I'll show you a clip today applying my eyeshadow. What I like is that this applies the product and blends it at the same time. It's incredibly soft. It's the perfect size and shape for the lash line. And previously on my lower lash line, I would always use like a pencil brush, but I felt like pencil brushes would deposit the product, but not really blend it. So then I'd have to like wipe it off and then go in and blend it. Some pencil brushes were also a little bit too pointy. They were a little bit too like scratchy, like the Mac one kind of scratched my, my skin a little bit. I don't know. It was overhyped, but this is perfect. This is my lower lash line dream and it's just a beautiful brush. I've really been getting into refer brushes lately. Uh, some of mine shed at first, but then they stopped and now I can really see where the hype's about. Did film a favorite brushes and tools video. I'll link that on the screen where you can see all of my favorite brushes and tools. They're especially good for any beginners out there because your girl's not particularly the best at makeup. So having tools that basically do the work for me is essential. Okay, this bad boy, the L'Oreal True Match Foundation, recently reformulated. This has filled a hole in my heart that I didn't know could ever be filled again. When Makeup Forever discontinued the Invisible Cover Foundation and turned it into the HD Skin Foundation, I was devastated. I spent, I don't know, I've spent at least like eight months, nine months, maybe longer, maybe a year searching for a replacement for that foundation and nothing came close. The new Makeup Forever HD Skin was great, but they pumped it full of fragrance, which gave me a chemical burn. And every foundation I tried just was not the same. All I've been looking for is a medium coverage foundation with a natural like skin-like finish, so not matte, not dewy, that is fragrance-free and has a shade match for me. You would think that that wouldn't be hard for me to find, but it was incredibly difficult. And so far, nothing has come close until now, the newly reformulated L'Oreal True Match Foundation. Holy shit, this is good. Nothing has come close to that discontinued Makeup Forever Foundation until now. This is the same shit, I swear to God. This is the same Invisible Cover Foundation, just like repackaged and in a better price point, which is great. This is now with a pump, which is great. The old True Match Foundation just came with like a cap. You have to, you know, dump it out. Not the best, but now we got a pump. Huge upgrade, go L'Oreal. L'Oreal says that 99% of people have a shade match in this range. It comes in 47 shades. The old formula came in 45. I do not have a shade match in this, surprise, surprise. But I'm not super disappointed about it because it's only like $10 on Ulta right now. And you know, for $20, that's really not bad to mix. And also, you know, sometimes your skin fluctuates in color a little bit. So having that ability to adjust the color is kind of nice. So I'm not too mad that I don't have a shade range today. I mixed the shades C2, which is cool light and C2.5, which is cool light medium. And as you can see, it ends up being the perfect color on my skin. It's so thin and serum-like and it just blends like a dream, especially with that Makeup Forever 109 foundation brush that I love. You can see that it has a beautiful skin-like finish. It's not dewy, it's not matte. It's just that perfect skin-like look that I really love and always crave in a foundation. And that's one of the reasons why I always wear concealer over my face instead of foundation is because truly I just have a really hard time finding foundation that I like and so now I actually get excited to reach for foundation again instead of just you know using my concealers all over the face because this is just everything I've ever wanted for a second I thought it might be breaking me out but I did a full wear test and it turns out it wasn't that it was something else and I'm so <laughs> relieved because I was really scared that it was breaking me out and I'm stoked what more could I want in a holy grail foundation? I mean, the price point, the shade range, the the pump, like the, the texture, everything. It's just, it's perfect. I'm so happy about it. Thank you to the L'Oreal gods. I'm just gonna skip straight ahead to lips because I was just wearing a clear lip balm. I feel like it was kind of washing me out. Um, I have a ton of lip products. No one's surprised, no one. But the Lip Definer in O2 from Victoria Beckham is where I want to start today because this is officially, Jonathan, what do you need? He's headed to town. Okay, where was I? The Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in O2 has become my absolute favorite lip liner, both because of the formula and the color. I have filmed a full Victoria Beckham brand review video. If I've posted it, I'll link it on the screen. If not, it'll be coming soon. And I'll show you, I'll zoom you on in. This baby is the perfect nude. It is not too dark. I feel like a lot of kind of pinky mauve -y lip liners sometimes are a little bit too dark for me. And it's just that perfect, 
nude pink. It is a pencil formula, but I don't find it drying at all. It's like creamy and it glides really well, but it's not too creamy. And so it lasts a little bit longer. I just love it. I love everything about it. And it's all I've been wearing lately. I honestly feel like I've been buying so many lip liners in the past year because I was just looking for this. This is all I really ever needed. And this is, it's everything. It's perfect. So now that I have the lip definer in O2 on, I'm going to show you my absolute favorite nude lip that I've been wearing with it, which is the Ami Cole Lip Treatment Oil in Bliss. So good. I can't stop. Oh my God, it's amazing. Look at what this does to my lips. It makes them look so juicy and so youthful. I love this kind of fuzzy, chunky applicator. It has the tiniest flush of color. It's like a very, very sheer muted pink, which is really beautiful. It ends up just transforming into a nude lip on me and it goes with everything. If you've been seeing me wear a really glossy nude lip recently, it's been this with the Victoria Beckham lip definer. This formula is thick and it's grippy and it's nourishing. And to me, grippy is a formula that like coats the lips, lasts a really long time, which is my favorite kind of formula versus something sticky. Sticky to me is when the lips stick together and you get that kind of like, you know, pull of the lips that's like really unflattering and really uncomfortable to wear. Grippy is what I'm looking for in formulas because I don't want lip products to slide around. I don't want them to get outside my lip lines or get into my mouth. This is just perfect. I just think it makes my lips look bigger. It makes them look um, a little bit more youthful and it has this really nice kind of, I don't know, vanilla or maybe cotton candy scent, but it's subtle so it's not too overpowering. Also great price point at $20 and it's a black owned brand at Sephora. So like what's not to love? So this has been my most worn lip combo. It's been what I've been doing almost every day. I also love the shade Smitten from Ami Cole, which is this beautiful kind of hot fuchsia pink that's super sheer. So it looks kind of like a really, really bright, hot strawberry red in the tube, but it shears out to a pink on the lips. I've been absolutely loving that when I want a flush of color. So Smitten's definitely one of my faves. My second favorite lip product of 2023 basically has been the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Lip Balm something like that. And I decided to pick up Slip because I tried it on and I, I totally fell in love. Previously, I haven't been buying products from Hourglass because over the past few years, they had been just like really only catering to white people. It just wasn't a brand that really aligned with my personal values. I've recently been seeing a lot of creators start posting about them again. Seems like their launches have been a little bit better. Their representation has been better. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. So let me know if you have any thoughts, but I did pick this up and I was pretty blown away. Okay, I've zoomed you in so you can see the full effect of slip and it just makes the lips so glossy and so pretty. It just smooths over the lip lines and makes them look, I think the term volumizing is such a great way to describe it because it really does kind of look like it fills in your lip lines, makes the lips look bigger, more youthful. It's so beautiful. This does have a little bit of um, a peppermint scent, which I don't find dries out the lips and it is more subtle than the lip balm that I talked about earlier. It's just the kind of product that I can just keep in my purse at all times and it goes with everything and it just always boosts my confidence a little bit. It makes me feel really pretty. And I also got the shade Haze, which I don't like as much. A little bit kind of a, I don't know, like a peachy brown. So this is Haze, which I guess I would describe as, yeah, like a little bit of a reddish brown, super pretty. Another product people have just been raving about for such a long time are the Lisa Eldridge glosses, the Gloss Embrace formula. I got the shades Muse and Sorcery. Sorcery is by far my favorite. It's a gorgeous kind of sheer slightly cool toned chocolate. So that's what one layer of sorcery looks like. And this is what two layers of sorcery looks like compared to the other formulas I talked about. This is significantly thinner, feels a lot more like a lip serum. And even though it's a thinner product, it's so lightweight on the lips, you can barely feel it. It doesn't slide around. It doesn't get super runny unless I kind of press my lips together and then the lip product can migrate outside my lip lines, unlike if I'm wearing something that's a lot more grippy. But I think if you love a lightweight formula, this is a great option. They also come in a ton of different colors. They're fragrance free and they have three different finishes, which I think is really great. And I'll also apply the shade Muse for you really quickly. In the tube, it looks a lot more like a very soft, sheer, dusty mauve kind of color. On my lips, it warms up for some reason. It looks a little bit more 
slightly peachy, like a peachy, dusty rose shade that I really like. I actually find it to be almost the same color as Ami Colet's Bliss on me, so I absolutely love it. Interestingly, I had tried the Gloss Embrace formula back when it first launched, and I think I got the shade Go Lightly, and I really didn't like it. It was like gloopy. I think I actually have a video of it on my channel. If I can find it, I'll leave it linked on the screen above because I gave it a negative review, and it was just like so gloopy, and the pigment wasn't even, and it felt just like, yeah, gloopy in a way that's not good. <laughs> Not that gloopy is ever good, but sometimes I like a thicker product and it felt thick in a bad way. So I don't know if she reformulated these because these are completely different from the first Gloss Embrace one that I tried. So maybe if you had the same experience as I did, you know, try a new one because um, they do have very excellent customer service as well. And I'm just very impressed. My last lip favorite of the month has been the Victoria Beckham lip glosses, the Posh Gloss formula. These are another lip serum kind of formula, so something that is thinner, more lightweight and liquidy on the lips, but still doesn't kind of slide around like a lip oil, still feels nourishing. It is quite similar to Lisa Eldridge glosses, and it's very similar to the Moira Luminizing Gloss formula. I'm going to apply the shade Fizz. Fizz is my favorite. It's a slightly cool-toned rose. Ugh, so pretty. So buttery and lightweight. This kind of color just makes me feel really pretty, and it's really soft and romantic. And I also have the shades Bungalow and tan lines, and I'll show you footage here. Bungalow is a really beautiful, light, milky pink. It's not so light that it gives you like NARS Turkish Delight vibes. It's not like a very, very white-based pink, but it is a very light shade. Luckily, the pigment is super even, and I don't think it washes me out. And then we have tan lines, which I would say is a very light caramel nude, so it's like a little bit more of a yellow-based beige, which is good because I don't have any color like this in my collection, so when I want to wear a nude lip, that, you know, has a little bit of a warmer undertone versus all of the pinky nudes that I reach for, then this is a great option. I'm going to speed through the cheek formulas because I've talked about them at length recently. I'm wearing both of these, which is the Kulfi Mendy Moment Cream Blushes. I have Sandalwood Swirls and Pinky Promise, and I layered both today. I started with Sandalwood Swirls, which is this gorgeous kind of cross between like a terracotta and a mauve rose. It's my perfect shade. It's my perfect everyday you know, goes with everything kind of blush color. Blended with the Sephora 47 brush, it just blends like a dream. I love that this has a super thick cream formula. Unlike the Glossier Cloud paints that come in this same packaging, that formula is so liquidy, it kind of just like shoots out product. With this, you really have to squeeze to get it out, and so I find that I don't over apply it, and so it's not as wasteful. This is also incredibly pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way, and then they set down and they don't budge. I also applied the shade Pink promise on top of it just because I could not resist. It's so beautiful. It's this gorgeous, vibrant, warm pink that's going to be great for the spring and summer months. Truly, truly, the Kulfi formula has turned me back into a cream blush girl. Now when I do my makeup, I want to reach for this and I want to reach for creams because this is so blendable, so flattering, so skin-like, and just really long-lasting. But my second favorite has no doubt been the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pillow Talk. This is the only one I really liked from the range. I didn't like the other shades and I found that the levels of pigment were either way too sheer or way too pigmented. This is my perfect little Goldilocks formula, a great kind of sheer dusty mauve color that again is the kind of shade that goes with everything for me and it's easy to apply. It blends like a dream. It's a liquid with a slightly moussey quality to it so it blends very quickly and easily, especially with the brush that I use. And I find that because this one's on the more sheer side, I do like to apply two layers and layering this works just fine. And then once they set, they don't budge and they last all day. This is by far one of my favorite products from Charlotte Tilbury ever. You know, I don't love the packaging of these matte wands, but I just, I think the formula is an absolute 10 out of 10. The highlighter I'm wearing today is the Vive Skin Dew. This is Jamie Genevieve's brand. She is a YouTuber and a makeup artist and I just think it gives the most beautiful glossy skin look, but it sets down, which is so interesting. When you first apply this, it's like a thick gel and it's almost a little bit, I don't know, kind of alarming to apply because you're like, oh my God, this is so sticky so tacky. Is my hair going to stick to this? When it first goes on, it is the kind of formula that I don't like. And so when I first tried this, I hated it. And then after 30 minutes, it set down and I realized it doesn't budge and it doesn't stay tacky. It's just perfect. It like starts out as this gloss and then it sets down. It is the absolute perfect liquid highlighter. I love it. It's also strange that it's this bright, 
bright, like kind of almost yellow gold, and yet it melts into the skin, it truly, truly melts, and then sets, and you still get that gloss-like effect, but it's skin-like, it doesn't look like you're wearing highlighter, there's no visible shimmer particles, it's just one of the best highlighters I've ever tried. Put this on your collarbones, mix it into lotion. I have mixed this into foundation, I've mixed this in with their concealer, because their concealer can be a little too matte for me, so I'll do a dot of the concealer, a dot of this, I'll put that under my eyes, or I'll use more of that and I'll put it all over my face. Truly, this is a multifunctional product and it is just wonderful. It also has an interesting smell. It smells like marshmallows. I like it. Okay, now we're on to eyes. I know that it was a lot, but I just have so many things that I'm excited to talk about. Starting with the eyeshadow I'm wearing today, which is the Violette FR Yeu Paint in To Do, and this is a matte liquid eyeshadow. It's, I would probably describe it as like a light medium, slightly warm chocolate color, and I'm wearing it all over my lids, up to the crease, and on my lower lash line today. I I always start by applying just like a thin line and a little of this goes a long way. I over apply every single time I wear this because it is so stretchable. The pigment just blends and blends and blends and you're like, where is this product coming from? It seems to almost like multiply on your eyes. It's crazy. So I think for people with really dark skin tones, that's probably gonna be super helpful to have products that you know are gonna show up. I mean, it's great. It's wonderful that they added this much pigment because it works on a wider range of skin tones. They come in a bunch of beautiful shades. They also have a metallic finish. You just have to be a little bit careful not to over apply, but you do have a good amount of time to work with them before they set down. And so for that reason, I do find them easy to use. I definitely over applied them today, but I just wiped some off with my finger and concealer brush and I was good to go. And this color just makes me feel really sexy. You know, like matte kind of chocolate browns are the eyeshadows I reach for when I want to feel my best. That's my favorite kind of look, you know, that kind of color that pops my eye and then I can keep the rest of my face really natural. So this is a new holy grail. In terms of colors that you don't see me wearing a lot on my channel. I've really developed quite an affinity for the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in Mink, which is this, you know, dark gunmetal silver gray kind of color. It's really beautiful. And at first when I applied it, I had no idea how to use it. I, I just, I, I don't usually reach for colors like that that have kind of some black in them, but I saw Hope Mess Tom use this and Tom blended it with this like really peachy matte eyeshadow and it made it look like the best smoky eye I'd ever seen. I wasn't really able to recreate <laughs> their look quite as well. Tom is just so good at blending eyeshadow, but I think I came, I, th I think I did okay, I did okay. And so when I blend this with a matte eyeshadow in the crease, I just think that it looks so good. I love that little extra warmth contrasted with the cool toned quality of this. And while the Lid Luster formula is not my favorite, I do find that there's some fallout with these. They're very hard pressed, so you don't get a lot with your finger when you, you know, dip it in the pot. It's not my favorite kind of formula considering there are so many other kind of glittery eyeshadows at a more affordable price point but this shade in particular is one that I'm really, really enjoying. Last two eyeshadows are basically the same product, but like amped up versions. Um, we have the Moira Lucent Cream Shadow in the shade Orion. I'll leave my Moira brand review linked on the screen above because this is my number one pick from that whole video. It's a cream shadow and I first heard of this brand from Lauren May Beauty and then I saw Amanda Z rave about this formula and it's wonderful. It's one of the only cream formulas that does not crease on me even though so many people have told me that these are pretty horrible when it comes to creasing, but I guess I got lucky. This shade Orion is this beautiful sheer peachy base with lots and lots of silver glitter. It's my perfect everyday eyeshadow. I have been wearing this non-stop. It's kind of up there with L'Oreal Amber Rush as like my perfect everyday shades. This is definitely up there. And then a very similar one that I've finally tried recently is Urban Decay Space Cowboy. It's just as good as everyone says. It's a gorgeous sheer peachy base with lots of silver glitter. Compared to Orion, this is a powder glitter formula and it just has lots and lots more glitter. So I actually like to layer them together. I'll do Orion and then I'll just amp it up with this on top and I get such a glossy, almost wet like shine effect on the eyes. Another great way to wear this is on top of Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize and Exaggerize. Almost the same product as well, but Charlotte Tilbury has a stronger peach base. And so that peach base with all of the silver shimmer in this, it just kind of like amplifies what you already have. Oh, Space Cowboy just makes 
everything look great. Oh shoot, I forgot. I have another eyeshadow after this that I'll talk about next, but I have the Vive eyeshadow wand in camel and I love putting this on top of that. They just, it makes every eyeshadow just look more glamorous. It's just, it's wonderful. Sometimes viral makeup trends do get it right. And lastly, I almost forgot to talk about this baby. The Vive eye wand in camel is very similar in concept to, you know, the Violette to do eyeshadow, a warm brown matte eyeshadow that blends like a dream, is pigmented, but you know, really easy to apply and then sets down and does not budge. This is just in a crayon form. And what I like about this is this has a little bit more of a warm undertone to it. There's definitely a little bit of like a peach in here. So I'll reach for to do when I want something that's a little bit more neutral brown with a hint of red. And I'll reach for camel when I want something that's kind of sandy, neutral brown with a hint of peach. This is by far my favorite eyeshadow crayon formula that I've ever tried. And I have lost the light because where I live now, we are getting blizzards and then the next minute it's snow and then the next minute we don't have power for five days. So hopefully you can see me a little bit better now. I apologize for the lighting that's been absolutely crazy in my videos. I'm not used to filming with inconsistent lighting because we're going through some climate hell here in Garberville, California. I don't know what's going on. I got to learn how to shoot without any natural lighting. But anyways, great, great Great product. Vive, I want, fantastic. Love it. 10 out of 10 best eyeshadow crayon formula of all time. Anyways, hi, it's several hours later. I was uploading the footage and realized I forgot to talk about my beloved Jones Road bronzer in Dusty Rose. As you can see in the application clip, this is kind of a real true bronzer. It's a blush bronzer hybrid. It's very, very rosy, which is great for people like me with cool undertones, fair skin, fair to light skin, or even light skin, people who just turn a little bit red in the sun like I do. I got those iris jeans, so I don't instantly tan. I definitely burn first. And this is what my skin looks like when it's actually sun-kissed. I absolutely love it. The formula is super, super soft and silky, sheer but buildable, which is exactly what I like for a bronzer. I've gotten a lot of negative comments on Instagram from people saying that this bronzer looks like shit on me and they think that it's really ugly and it's a blush and blah, 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 blah. But I don't give a flying fuck because I think it's beautiful and it's actually the color that my skin turns when it's touched by the sun. So booyah, I love it. Bye. Stay tuned for part two of this video, which will be all about my February fails. If you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe and hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I'll see you in the next one.